Let's go. Welcome. This is Rob Booker, and it's Wednesday, July 1st, and this is the FX Street Support Resistance blah, 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 whatever webinar that I always seem to be late for, have the audio wrong for, can't get the charts working for, et cetera, et cetera. And I totally apologize for that, and I'm really excited to spend time with you today. The euro dollar is, has been on my mind lately. Has it been on your mind? Have you been thinking about the euro dollar, Jimmy? Sue, A.B., have you been thinking about the euro dollar? We could just call it your happy time. Um, here's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the one-hour chart. Last night, it tried to break down through 1.4,000, but it could not do it. And now, look at this sucker. It went all the way back up to 41.50, which is the top of its recent range. If you look at the, the currency pair over the course of, say, the last, oh, I'd say since the beginning of June, this area right here that we're in right now, 4150, 4170, that is the top of the range. And it hasn't really been able to break out above that area. It hasn't been able to break above that area and stay above that area at all. Today could be the day when we stay above 4150 and we close at the end of the day above that level. I don't want that to happen because I'm still net short the euro dollar. But I want to look today at a couple different variations on what the plan could be from here on out. First of all, I want to confront the brutal facts about something that I don't really want to have happen. If this closes today, there's an old trade that worked out just fine. If we close today and we close above 41.70 on the daily chart, this is the four-hour chart right now, but I want to look at that because it makes it a little bit easier to see the previous highs and talk about the trade. Let's say at the end of the day we close above this 41.70 mark. Then I think, um, I think we're going to get fairly easily all the way up to 42.66. 4280, maybe even as high as 4300. But for those of you that want to think about a long euro dollar position, I think that would be a completely reasonable thing to do. Did the ADP jobs report thing come out today? Hmm. I was wondering what that said. I don't even know if there's any companies left for ADP to process payroll for, but in the case that they are still processing payroll for anybody. Yeah, there certainly won't be any Forex companies anytime soon, that's for sure. All right. Now, Let's consider the alternative. If we don't go up and we don't close today above 4150, 4170 and in that area, then we are looking at a possibility that this currency pair could come back down lower. I'm going to review what I said about the euro dollar by pulling up the euro dollar chart right now. You should be looking at the euro dollar five minute chart. And uh, we talked about the fact that it did break an ultra-steep trend line on the five-minute chart, and it could make its way down to a trend line on the 60-minute chart. That is a trade with, without a great trend line entry. That five-minute trend line was super steep, and I don't love that trend line that we, draw, that we drew. It's not my favorite trend line in the whole world. Um, if you don't want to take that trade, what I wanted to mention also is if it simply breaks below... 41.35, simply breaks below it, just crosses the barrier and goes to, say, 41.30. Without a close of a five-minute candle below that level, I would be willing to sell it there. Uh, Australian dollar, U.S. dollar, it's kind of the same issue with the Australian dollar. If we fall back, where, where could we possibly get to? If we fall back, we could possibly get to this trend line. I don't like that trend line as much. I like something more recent. All right, so there's a so there's a baseline on the 60-minute chart that I want to get to, and all right, we started on the Australian dollar U.S. dollar 60-minute time frame, and now we've moved to the Australian dollar U.S. dollar five-minute time frame, and what we're looking at is it's, once again it's an ultra steep trend line situation. And it's very similar to the euro. If you missed what we talked about in the euro, we're going to go back to it later, and it's going to look a lot like this. There's a longest-term trend line that terminates from the 60-minute chart at about 80.30. And then on the 5-minute chart, which we're on right now, or on the 5-minute chart, which is in front of you, there's a steeper trend line here. And if that trend line, if that trend line breaks, if this currency pair closes below that trend line, then we could see this currency pair fall all the way to the longer term one. That's a steep trend line, and I do not really prefer steep trend line breaks. What I'd prefer is 
um, something much less steep than that. If we get below 80, 84, that's also a horizontal level of support. If we could get to 80, 80, that would also be, um, practically speaking, that would be a reason to possibly go short targeting 80, 30. Um, stop loss would go above 81, 15. Let's go back to the euro dollar for those of you that missed the euro dollar when all this was going on. Can you see my euro dollar chart? I'm going to type in euro dollar five minute. Let me know that you can see that. Okay. What I said about the euro dollar, Pete and others, is that if we broke this trend line, this super steep trend line, that could justify a sell trade down to the longer term trend line from the one hour chart. However, that trend line is so steep that you might not feel comfortable doing that. So alternatively, we could wait for the currency pair to fall below 41.35, even just cross it, not close below it even, but just cross the barrier and, and get to 41.30, sell the currency pair with a stop loss at 41.80, 41.85, and target the 40.20 area, which is the long-term trend line from the 60-minute chart that looks like this. Right here, that green baseline. would be happy to look at the U.S. dollar Japanese yen. Here's the U.S. dollar Japanese yen. I'm going to type the words on the screen, and then you can let me know that you're able to see it. Okay, U.S. dollar Japanese yen. This is the 60-minute chart. We're in the same situation on the U.S. dollar Japanese yen that we were on the euro dollar and on the Australian dollar Japanese yen. Okay, um, U.S. dollar Japanese yen. We have a baseline on the one-hour chart. We're currently looking at the 60-minute, the one-hour chart. If it falls back, where could we get to? Well, we could get to this baseline right here. I even want to go a little bit further out and say that there's an alternative baseline on this currency pair that's less steep and goes like this. And we're going to color that one black just to differentiate it from the, the trend line that we have. I want to go to a shorter time frame now, and we'll talk about the long time frame as well. I want to, we'll talk about the buy trade, AB. I want to talk about the short trade first, and then we'll talk about the long trade. So I think that a close below this blue entry line on the 15-minute chart could carry us all the way down to 95.57, which is the longer-term green baseline on this chart. Let's look a little bit bigger picture now. If you bought the, the dollar-yen, if you're long the dollar yen right now, I want to look at the four hour chart and I want to talk about areas that we could be getting to. The number one area that I'd been thinking about for a long time was this level right here on the four hour chart. It's a baseline above where we currently are. So if you took a trend line break on this currency pair when it broke this trend line right here and you went long, which I think AB probably did, I think we could get up to this area right here on the chart. This area is uh, terminates at about 97.75 and is a longer term trend line from the four hour chart. Let's look at it on the one hour chart and see how far we away we are from that. We're still right now over 100 points away from that level and that's where we would be targeting on the long trade. And so there's kind of a long setup and a short setup. The short trade hasn't opened yet. AB and some others might be long the dollar yen already, and the target for me would be this longer term trend line drawn on the four hour chart. Certainly comes in handy when thinking about this currency pair in the bigger picture longer term. So there's a buy trade possibility that is already open, and there's a short trade possibility that has not opened yet. What currency pair would you like to look at next? I'd love to look at something top to bottom, start to finish, that maybe um, you have right now that's a losing trade. Like, does somebody have right now a trade going on that's uh, at a loss? While you're thinking about that, I want to look at the weekly chart for the euro together with you and show you this longish term trend line from the weekly chart. You can see that the euro dollar is breaking upwards right now. And as it's breaking upwards, it's breaking above a trend line from the four hour chart. And it seems to be stretching and moving towards a longer term trend line from that weekly chart. And that longer term trend line from the weekly chart kind of terminates around right now anyway, in the 42.50, 42.40 area. Now, I can think of nothing that I'd like less than to see the euro dollar go up that far, but uh, that's just a fact of the matter. It looks like what's going on with the euro dollar right now. 
Okay, AB is losing on the pound dollar. So why don't we take a look at the pound dollar for AB? Going to remove some stuff off of this chart and change to the pound dollar. Pound dollar 60 minute chart. I'm going to type in pound dollar on the screen so you can tell me if you can see it. That's the British pound US dollar. Okay. What I want to do is go up the bottom. I want to start with the weekly, and then I want to go from there. This is still the British pound, U.S. dollar, and we have definitely corrected back upwards. The, the currency pair has now, you know, retraced. This is the weekly chart, and we've retraced the 38% mark, and we're on the way up perhaps to the 50% retracement. I mean, we could get to 73.50. That's a long ways upward on this currency pair. We could get all the way upward. Will we? I don't know. You know, hold everything and let's wait a second just here for a minute. But on the pound dollar, um, that's a great idea, Rob. We can learn from someone's losing trade. Anyone? Ed, I don't even understand what you're saying. So <laughs> is that sarcastic or is that... Uh, like honest or whatever, I don't really know. But just let us know what you're actually thinking, not like in code. Okay, daily chart. Pound dollar in the daily chart. So it's corrected. It started to retrace that long, long, long downward slide. So what happens now, Amy? Um, if you're short, it's not looking good, and it's, it's hugging the top of its range, and it's got this triangular wedge that's sloping upwards. Um, you know, what do we do about that? Are you long or short or should you be? Well, right now, on this currency pair, on this chart, there isn't anything that shows me that I ought to be long or short from the daily or the weekly chart. I don't see anything that shows me that I ought to be one or the other. There's no real definite. There's a downward trend that's been corrected, and now there's this, is this an emerging upward trend or not? And the answer to that is completely unclear right now. Oh, well, Ed, you're absolutely right. That's the point, what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I want to talk about, Ed, is... I want to talk about if you have a losing trade, how do we salvage it? What do we do about the losing trade? I, I hate talking about the winning trades because nobody needs any help with the winning trade, right? I mean, the whole point is if you do have a losing trade, what are we going to look at? So AB and others, if you were short the pound dollar right now and things weren't going well, here's everything that I would look at starting now on the daily chart. Um, let's say the top of this range is 6736. Because most of us can't hedge, which Ed brings up, you can't just sort of lock yourself into a losing position, which just sounds like the greatest idea ever. You can't do that anymore unless you're with a, a broker outside of the United States. So the top of the range, AB, is 67.36. I know that's 200 points away from where we are now, but that's, that's the super danger zone. That would be when everything is just blown up. Okay, you should be looking at my pound dollar daily chart. All right, here's my pound dollar daily chart. What I've been talking about is maybe the currency pair correcting back down to the green baseline. And, and, and we talked about AD being in trouble on a sell trade and that above 67.36, this is really in trouble. Um, definitely in trouble. On the 60 minute chart, there's a way to possibly AD salvage some of this position if it's gone bad. Um, you can see that we're way far above our profit target line um, it's way down there, so we can't even see it right now on the 60-minute chart. I could draw, and I want to draw, a trend line on the 60-minute chart just like this. And maybe if it falls below that trend line, I'd like to add a position. Below 6,400, I'd like to add a position. And then still try to get down to that baseline that we drew on the daily chart. However, there isn't any area that I can find sooner than 67.36 AB, at which point I think that this is really in big trouble. And so it's, it's kind of like one of those things where you're holding on for now and you're really worrying about whether you should be. I want to go down to the five-minute chart now, and there is nothing on the five-minute chart that I can draw. Everything's moved up so quickly and so steeply this morning that there isn't really a trend line that I can draw on the five-minute chart that's, that's reasonable or even that's reasonable. So on the, on, the, on the pound dollar right now, I wouldn't want to be short until we go below this trend line from the one-hour chart that I talked about. And if we could get below that trend line on the one-hour chart, I'd want to go down to the trend line on the daily chart that you see right here, the green baseline. Fundamental says, Ed, 
indicate a weak pound. And I totally agree with that. I completely agree with that. But the fundamentals aren't lining up with the technicals right now. I mean, things are just operating in reverse. And so it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of difficult. Kind of difficult. That's, that's really not telling the whole story. Let's go back to the euro dollar for a moment. We started off on the dollar today, and it's already 10.42 Eastern time. And I know this has been a pain in the butt for everybody, but I want to go back to this one because I think this is the trade of the day. And despite all the problems, um, Ed says he might hold out if no chance of a margin call. Yeah, I guess. Um, I guess. What do you think Ed should do, Josh? Hold out? Yeah. Absolutely, says Josh, even though he doesn't know what you're talking about. Euro dollar five-minute chart. I want to repeat what I said earlier because I, cause the sound was cutting off and everything. Um, below 41.35. At 41.30, I would not mind opening a sell trade down to about 40.20, 40.30. That's a baseline from the one-hour chart. Above 41.70, I think the currency pair can get all the way up to 42.60, 42.70, even 43.00. And I just want to, I want to reiterate that, that the, the euro dollar is at a critical stage right now. It, small movements above these levels or below these levels have major consequences. And I'm short the euro dollar, so anybody else who would, wouldn't mind going short the euro dollar together with me, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, LC says that he or she has been long on the euro dollar since last week. And um, thanks, LC. Show off. That's awesome. I hope I hope that's done well for you, and I, I hope that that you know your happiness and and profit can maybe outweigh some of the pain that other people are going through. It's all just balanced out, right? Hey, Boyke is back. That's amazing. I haven't seen Boyke here in a long time. Um, we probably have time, Mod, for one more currency pair, maybe one more chart to look at. Okay, I want to look at the New Zealand dollar. Well, yeah, I want to look at something crazy. No, let's just do this. Euro Swiss, perfect. Perfect. I think that's a great idea. Who suggested that? Ed. Ed, you're the, oh, there's no other speaker after me. Ed, you're the, you're the webinar attendee of the day. I just want to uh, anoint you supreme webinar attendee with all power. You, you are very welcome, Ed. It's the least that I could do. Let me just uh, switch to a different chart so I can show the Euro Swiss without any trouble. Five minutes. Uh, we'll go five more minutes. This is perfect. Great. And so there's this trading range that has developed that is just totally savage. It's just going sideways almost constantly. And you can see that after the intervention, which happened right here, where the Swiss came in and bought like, I don't know, 7 billion euros and sold 7 billion Swiss francs. And everybody's talking about the, the SNB won't let it below 1.5 thousand. That's not true. They will let it below that level. They can't keep the world currency markets from going below certain levels. They can try. It's what they want that matters. And right now, people are kind of scared off by the Euro Swiss. If it closes below the bottom of this really tight range that you see in the small blue box on the chart in front of us, if it closes below that range on the 15-minute chart, so let's, this is the Euro Swiss, let's go to the 15-minute chart, that, would be, that could be a massive trade. That could be a trade worth 100 to 200 points very easily. If it closes above the top of that range, it could be the opposite. Right now is a critical stage for this because who's going who's gonna to go first? Who's going to start trading this first in front of the Swiss National Bank? What the Swiss National Bank did is it basically eliminated anybody from wanting to trade this currency pair from the market for the last four days. Even longer than that, last five days. Nobody wants to trade this currency pair. And in particular, over the last 24 hours, the currency pair just can't move. It just can't move. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy stuff. And um, the media says, has said that, they will sell Euro Swiss at 5250. That's why the level is so congested. You know, I, I, who knows what anybody really wants to do? And that's a monopoly almost. Yeah, well, they want a monopoly on their currency. Every central bank pretty much wants everybody in the world to get away from them, and every central bank in the world pretty much wants their own to, to wreck the, their own currency and their own interest rates and whatever else. But we live in a day and age where maybe the central banks don't really have that much influence anymore. 
Um, did the ADP jobs report not come out? It did come out. What did it? It was better than expected. It was worse. So, so we could be looking at pretty savage job losses in the states. Oh, that would be spectacular. I hope everybody just on Friday. <laughs> Terrible. Can we trust boxes on this pair right now? Yes, Abe, you can trust boxes on this pair. Ed, I think you're absolutely right. Ed, you're definitely, I totally believe that. I think the Australian dollar, U.S. dollar will be the, the currency pair of the year. I think it will show significant gains. I absolutely positively agree with what you are saying. I am totally sorry that I am a complete idiot when it comes to using Hotcom. I, I have no idea why I can never get this right. And I apologize that it's made it more difficult for you. And I know that you come here expecting to learn stuff and you don't want to deal with my inability to use software or whatever. So the level of patience that you have and kindness that you show in sticking around during the time that I'm, you know, battling with software and whatever else is totally appreciated. And I just want to express my appreciation to Maud for being, you know, nice to me even when it doesn't matter. And Ed says we should all meet in the bar for the next time. And Ed, I cannot possibly agree with you more. Ed, where do you live? Why are we not in London right now? Why, why are we not all in London right now? No, Maud, thank you for your patience. And it's my fault, and I don't know how to use the software very well. Ed's in Greece. Okay, great. Before we go, can everybody just tell us where you're at? Where are you, from? Where are you joining us from today? I love to hear this. Where are all of you joining us from today? Just type in wherever you're from. We've got London, Elena in London, John Tobb in Poland, Rohan in India, Flo in Germany, Exeter, UK, London, Mallorca, Spain. Mike, I would love to come visit you. Uh, Victoria, Canada, Haiti, Colombia, Colombia, uh, Malaysia, Auckland, Wales, Minneapolis, Seattle, UK, Indonesia, London, uh, Cumbria, Portugal, New Mexico, Melbourne, Berkeley, California. Uh, Ed delayed spearfishing today in Greece to be here. Ed, thank you. I appreciate that. Orlando. Wow, it's great to have everybody here from all over the place. I really appreciate it. That's fantastic. Thanks for joining us. I will be back next week. And um, AB says the fish do appreciate it as well that you didn't go spear fishing just yet. Thanks, everybody, for being so patient. The trade of the day really is the euro dollar below 41.35 or above 41.70. That's what I'm paying the most amount of attention to. Secondarily, I'm paying attention to the euro swiss on the 60-minute chart and 15-minute 15, 15 chart and really paying attention to this range.